Hello and welcome back to the video demonstration of the Aquarius Time Series Data Management System. In the previous video, we had a look at how we could bring our data into the Aquarius system. In this video, what we're going to do is have a deeper look at how we're going to do the data edits and the data corrections on our time series data. Now, no matter how well we practice field techniques, there's always going to be some order of problems with our, with our time series data. These could be sensor drifts, we could have datum adjustments we need to make, um, we could have outliers due to telemetry problems, we could have gaps in our data sets. So all of these things are the things we're going to want to be able to somehow take care of in a visual environment. And that's what Aquarius lets us do in a very beautiful way. And the way we'd do that is we'd pick a couple of our data sets. I'm in the data sets view here. Uh, I would pick my, for example, stage from the primary DCP. This is my continuous data. And I'll just do a secondary click to get my uh, stage from the field visit. So these are my actual staff gauge readings. And the tool I actually want to launch here is called the Aquarius Data Correction Toolbox. When the Aquarius Data Correction Toolbox is being launched, what we're going to see is the main user interface environment for how we'd work on and correct our time series data. Now most of this interaction with the data set is done visually on graph, but there is of course the standard grid view off to the side where when we zoom in on a section of data we're going to get a snapped grid view over here. Now if you want to get these out of the way you can easily do so just by pinning them off to the side and then they appear as tabs that will come out whenever you want them and they'll disappear when you don't. So you can easily manage desktop real estate on small screens, especially laptop screens. Now a few of the other panes that we have here, one of the critical ones down at the bottom is called the change list. Now this is the audit log and all changes that have ever happened to your time series data are going to be recorded in here. And they're broken up here into different categories. So we have things like the changes in the approval code of the data, all the corrections that we performed on the data, including who did them, when they did them, and why they did them. We also have a list of all the flagging that's ever happened against this time series data set, any grades or quality codes that we've assigned to the data set, and also a list of all the different sections of the data set and how we should interpolate in between the, in between the individual data points. Now already, individually right here, you can see that there actually is a correction that has been applied to this data set, and that would be concordant with what we have down here in the correction history. And if we zoomed all the way back out on our data set and we started looking at these, you can see that as I click on a correction item in the history, it highlights here the section of data that was actually adjusted. And if I double click on this, it's actually going to zoom me directly into that region. And it's going to show me the exact parameters of, of the correction right over here on the left-hand pane. Now this is where we're going to be working when we actually want to go and perform some of these corrections. Now, the example that I want to run here is just a little example on some individual gauging measurements where the, the continuous reader, the continuous data logger, is uh, drifting from time to time in between the field visits. So what we're going to want to do is take into account that drift on the sensor. We can see there's a field visit here and there's a field visit over here where people have read the staff gauge. And what we want to do is correct for the drift in that sensor. So to account for that, what I'm going to do is highlight a section of the data. So I'm going to use my highlighter tool and just mark it. So from left to right. It doesn't matter if I get exactly right on the endpoints or not. And what I want to do is make sure those markers actually snap to exactly the points. And I can move them back and forth if I want to so I can make them line up exactly. And there's a quick little zoom tool to help you get exactly to the points here. So this is the beginning of my correction. And I can zoom to the other end. And this is the end of my correction. You can see here my three staff gauge readings. So if I zoom out once again and then zoom back in on that section what we're going to be able to do is adjust in a pro rata method to allow to adjust this end point downwards while keeping this middle point or the starting point the same. And the type of correction that would be is what's called a drift correction. So a drift correction allows me to move my end point without moving my beginning point and prorating the difference over time. And I can do this on graph, so I can just drag this point down until I you know, eyeball it to be about correct. But if I know exactly how much I need to correct by, let's say I need to correct by exactly negative 0.16 feet, it'll tell me exactly what my end value is and where it actually shows up here. Now if I want to get a quick look on that, there's a quick tool to zoom there. That's the start point, that's the end point. You can see how it's adjusted more or less exactly to where I want to make it. I can adjust it across. So in this case, I know these values I can click on them, they're actually 10.000. So I can say, you know what, my end value would be 10.00. And then, sure enough, I've adjusted to exactly that value. Now, if I zoom back out or I go to my previous zoom, 
we can apply that correction. And this is where it's going to actually invoke a very powerful object within Aquarius. It's the correction history. So whenever you're making these corrections, it's going to pop open a correction dialog and ask you for an additional comment. It's going to put a comment in there for you automatically and say, this is what I was doing. I was doing this kind of correction with this amount. But I could put an additional comment in here. I could say, uh, just for demo's sake. And then I click OK. And what's going to happen now is that comment and that little item is going to go into the correction history. And you can see, sure enough, down here, there is my correction with that comment just entered into it. Now you can see how very quickly you can start going through and moving on to the next section of data. And you can see here there's another section of data that we're going to want to go and correct. And once you get the hang of this, you can actually go through and start correcting your data very quickly just by simply moving back and forth in between the quick zooms. Say, I say we want to go to there. Go to the other endpoint, right about there. Let's jump back to that endpoint. We can move that one to about there. We can zoom previous, 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 and then we're back. All right, now, so the type of correction we want to do here is a little different. We'd want to do a correction where we get to move both endpoints independently. That's called a multi point drift correction. I could move this one down, and I could move this one up. And you see you get that pro rata correction all the way in between. And here again, you can use that quick zoom to pivot point tool, and we can move that one up. We can go to the other one, move this one down, make it match, and there we go. That's a correction. You can see how very quickly you can start to go through your data sets and account for all these problems of drifting sensors very quickly. Now, that's just examples of doing pro rata corrections, but there are other methods of correcting your data for doing all sorts of other things. You can delete regions if you have outliers. You can fill small gaps using uh, different interpolation types. You can do linears and cubic spline interpolations. Uh, you can do a copy and paste correction if you have a redundant sensor. Uh, if you're doing an estimation on a descending uh, limb of a hydrograph, you can use recession curves. Uh, there's even the USGS multi-point correction model. This is very applicable in the case of water quality sensors where you have multi-point calibrations. An example here would be a pH sensor where you calibrate the pH uh, sensor in a, in a standard of 4, 7, and 10. So you might have different corrections based on time but also based on value. Uh, so there are all different types of uh, correction methodologies in here. But another concept worth mentioning here in a little more detail is the concepts of the data grades and the data approval codes. Something Aquarius does is it breaks apart these two ideas uh, into an approval code, which is an indicator of how, how much work has actually happened on this data. The data might not be good, but it still has been signed off on. We've done everything we can on the data. Whereas the data grade is an indicator, a subjective indicator of the quality of that data. It's often called a quality code. So if we zoom out here, we can see that for certain periods of this record, that's the approval code, this data has actually been approved whereas this section over here is still in the working state. This section I was just working on, that's been, that has been uh, set to be in the working state. So if I go back and I have a look at those, that section I just performed those corrections on, what I might want to do is say, you know what, from this time to this time, I'm going to set this, this section of the data to have a different approval code because I want someone else to go and review it. So I might set this data to be in review. And if I click Apply, it's going to apply that, and that will add a record into the approval table for me saying that I have set this section of data to the in approval state. Now, what I might want to do at some later date is also go in and change the grade on this section. Now, I've had to do a few data corrections uh, on this section, so we might not say the data is underlying is excellent, but what we could do is go and say, you know what, this data was very good, and we'll click Apply. Now, again, these lists of data grades or quality codes, they're all extensible, likewise with the approval codes. So you have full control over how many approval levels you want and how many data grades you want. So that's a pretty good overview of uh, how we'd sort of get into doing a little bit of the data editing. I hope you found this useful in terms of understanding what Aquarius could do for you in terms of your data processing. And what we want to do, if we want to save all that stuff back down to the underlying server, we can do that. Just hit the Save and Close button, and everything's going to be saved back down to the Aquarius server. So if I chose to, say, pull this same data set up in Quick View now, or another user was pulling it out from a different terminal or a different instance of Aquarius somewhere else, they would see the exact same thing that I just saved. If we just go and have a look here and zoom back out, and then we want to superimpose these two things on top of each other, we'll see exactly what we had before. And if we zoom in down here, we're going to see, indeed, there are my corrections as they were applied. And if we synchronize, you'll start to see in the grid view that some of this data is in review and the quality codes have been applied.